Hello and welcome to this introduction video to the new version of Qmetrix, version 2202. I'm Lorenzo, the founder of Lowway, and I'm here with Kevin from the dev team. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Lorenzo. Hi, everyone. To, we want to introduce you to the latest version with a very quick uh, video. And uh, we see that there are, uh, right from the, the login page, there is something different. Uh, I see that there is new stuff on the page, correct? Yes, absolutely. We have a couple of things here to see in the home page. We can see that apart from a graphical redesign, we also have this uh, new feature here in the bottom. So now Qmetrix allows users to log in using the uh, single sign in. So we can use our Google account or our Microsoft account if we want to log in. So use them as our, as our authentication provider. Exactly. You don't have to use them if you don't want to, um, and uh, but if you do and you use them around your organization, I think this is something that a lot of people were asking for. Yes, they can and be also, enabled see, or disabled. I see. Exactly, and I see also that the page uh, has there is is a, a bit different in terms of the way it looks like. Yes, this is part of uh, a few graphical uh, changes that have been applied throughout all the software. So apart from here, you can see there is a new and improved look uh, here in the login page. And if we log in, you can also see that in the home page, the colors are different. And this extends throughout Qmetrix. You will see examples of the new look with different colors, even in the wallboard page. So for example, if we go here and take a look at a wallboard, you can see that even the widgets have a different uh, color palette now. And this, of course, reflects uh, around different wallboards. Of course, uh, if you have set colors for your widgets earlier, they will not be changed. So you will still have your old colors. But if you update, you will then, from the settings in the widgets, have the ability to change the widget colors to the new one. Exactly. So we can see here, uh, there's also a slight font change as well. Exactly. And I see that also we have uh, um, a couple of uh, new themes, uh, a new theme actually, and uh, we revised the other themes so that uh, if you don't like the, the, the way this is too colorful, we have other options as well. But let's, uh, let's go to the, the, the real meat of this release. Uh, that is, uh, we did some important changes uh, on reports, correct? Yes, exactly. Basically, the biggest change regarding the reports is the fact that we have introduced the two new features, namely uh, the timeline feature and the call grouping feature. So to show you what I mean, let's go inside the report here and let's go take a look at, a, at the call details here. So we can take a call. Let's take, for example, this call here. If we go on the call details now, instead of going to the old call detail panel, we will go here to the new timeline panel. So wow. this, this panel is um, basically divided in two sections. There is the left section here that shows us the same details we are used to having in Qmetrix, so all the same information we used to have before. But now on the right, we, ha we have a timeline that details all the call events. Uh, that happened on this call. So for example, here we can see uh, the call went through an EVR. We can see the EVR choices. We can see the call that entered inside the sales support queue, was connected with this agent, and then was completed by the caller with timestamps. So you can follow along and you have a chronological breakdown of everything that happened on this call. For example, if you had ring no answers, you would see when they happened and the sequence, or if you put, uh, if, you, if the agent set uh, uh, a status code for the call, you would see when this happened. So Absolutely. there is a, a way better visibility into what happened during the journey. And if you're running multi-stint, you can see everything clustered together, so you can see the way the calls uh, progressed through the system. Absolutely. That is not uh, everything there is here in this page. You can see up here we have different tabs. 
So uh, with the new call details, of course, we have a new hub where to where we can listen to the call recordings. You will find here a menu uh, with all the recordings that are uh, with all the media essentially that is associated with this call. And from here, you can uh, you know listen to the call, change the speed of the call. But most importantly, as you can see here below, you can set markers on a call. And thanks to this mark, to these markers, you can you know go to and find specific uh, points in the call you want to listen to. So if you want to add a marker, instead you can use this button here, the red icon, that will let you create a marker. So for example, we can it will give you the time you are set on by default, but you can even change this. So let's say you want to put it 20 seconds, and we want to put it in pink. You can just save this marker here and once we do that you will have a test marker at the uh, correct 20 second mark so you can see by pressing play here it will jump us to the timestamp we gave it and by pressing here it will send us through and so this way it's very easy to navigate a call exactly and so for reviewers it's easy to find uh important parts or anything that that uh, makes sense to to annotate for further revision or for uh, the, to be to be accessed afterwards absolutely okay that's very nice so regarding instead the last thing is the old qa form is still accessible here in the last tab of this call details page so by clicking on this x on the top right we can return to the report so it's very easy to navigate to and from this timeline page. And uh, from here, it's very easy to instead show you the next uh, big feature that was introduced, which uh, are the call groupings. So you, as you can see in some of uh, our um, data blocks here, we now have a new icon here on the right that is essentially invites you to basically explode or expand the category. So for mm -hmm. example, let's take this answered calls by Q data block. As you can see here, it gives us the number of calls divided by Q. So how many mm -hmm. calls were um, essentially uh, arrived, entered on a queue in a set period of time. So let's take, for example, the sales queue. If we click on the call grouping icon now, we can see a list of all the calls that actually make up that uh, category. So we can see here that all the calls have sales as the queue because these were all the calls, then uh, 1,955 calls that arrived on that queue. So from here, we can actually see a breakdown of the calls that make up that number that we see. Exactly. Basically, in all the reports, uh, where uh, there is a count of calls, so Qmetrics is saying that uh, specific status or whatever, there are 27 calls that match this. You can click on groupings and see which calls are those 27 that Qmetrics is talking about and then go drill down. Yes, absolutely. We can go back, for example, instead of the calls by Q, we can go and look at the calls, for example, by agent. This is another good example. Here, for example, let's say John, Mike Bosch here has 712 calls. If we click on his grouping icon, we can go here and see all the calls that were handled by him. So you can see here there are 712. And, and we they, can see the details. As well. And we can see from here, yes, of course, we have the uh, details icon on the left and we can thus go to the actual timeline. As you can see here is a, the, you can, it also you know, shows the music on hold events, for example, in this case, which we didn't have before. And uh, yes, absolutely. So we have, uh, we can navigate to and from the timeline panel from the call groupings panel. And it's very easy. In fact, from here, we can go back to the grouping and pick another call, for example. So it allows okay. us very easily to get into the timeline of the different calls that make up this grouping. And then from here, we can go back and we will go back to where we were before in the report. So uh, it's very intuitive how to navigate from all exactly. these, from and to and from all these different panels. This really looks nice. 
Uh, one other thing that we that was added that is uh, looks very humble but is pretty important instead um, is uh, a new audit log page or better uh, there are way more things that end up in the audit log can you show us Kevin yes absolutely so we um, had a lot of feedback from a lot of customers that were interested in having more logging power when it came to you know uh, users that, that access the system and what type of events or uh, what type of actions they were performing on the systems. So new events have been added here, absolutely. So you can see here is a, there's a lot more things going on now in the audit exactly. log page. There are three, three things, uh, three areas actually, that uh, four areas that have been improved. Uh, the first is that every time there is a configuration change or you somebody goes into the details of a configuration, for example, goes look at the configuration of a specific queue, it is logged here. Uh, so you can know who looked at what uh, and uh, who uh, did some changes. Every time somebody starts an action to happen on the PBX, for example, logging an agent on and off or for an agent logging themselves on and off, and this causes something on the PBX, uh, this is something that, that appears here. And uh, um, when somebody uses the new single sign-on, uh, all this activity is logged there. Last but not least, uh, you can uh, even put, uh, every time there is a, um, an error because uh, there are too many agents in the report, or a report is too slow, or a report is, uh, has uh, too many rows, uh, you can uh, basically have this logged so that you can know who is running the specific report that kills the system at uh, 2 p.m., for example. So it's, uh, it will be easy to go, to go in and find it. Exactly, exactly. You can see here, for example, our marker was logged when we added the marker to the recording earlier. Exactly. So this is just a very brief overview. We had uh, over 130, correct? Yes, yes, we have a lot we of had a fixes. Lot, there was a lot of work, uh, a lot of work uh, in uh, in this release. That there are a number of a lot of things that have been improved and slightly changed, so that they are more usable. So uh, we suggest that you check it out, and uh, we are very happy that you've been with us so far, and we hope you are going to like what we did. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thanks. Bye.